Julian Nagelsmann has been placed on the shortlist to replace Graham Potter by Vaville. I told you guys that was going to happen. But the big problem here is Chelsea have got to the 30th of June to start selling players because it leaks how much is going to cost to sack Graham Potter, hence why I think he hasn't been sacked. And more importantly, the players that are on the shortlist to get out of Chelsea Football Club. Oh yeah, Kai Havertz apparently wants to leave as well. Let's get in. Welcome to the Kafka Zubrato here. Today's video is jam packed with a lot to decipher, a lot to break down, and a lot to get our tape into. So I'm not going to repeat what I said in the opening intro, but additionally, at the end of the video, we are going to talk about Noni Maduweke and Levi Colwell absolutely lighting it up for France versus England. And for me, they showed that they are potentially ready for the first team. They are ready to contribute in some shape or form. However, should they be starting on a weekly basis? That's something we need to talk about. But let's get into the stuff that you guys definitely want to hear and about Nagelsmann being on the short. Before I forget though, and before you forget, in the most important thing you guys can do to support this channel is not super thanks. You can add all the donations that you want, send them through. I will greatly appreciate that but hit that like button. If you hit the like button, it's free of charge, it really supports the channel, and it pushes it out to other people, and other people watch it and enjoy it. And you made it this far, you clearly have. And also subscribe to the damn channel. Guys, it's very easy to do. You enjoy the content, you return on a regular basis, so please, just subscribe. But other than that, now let's move on with the So Sky Sports is now reporting that Julian Nagelsmann has made the Chelsea shortlist. Unless you've been sleeping under a rock and you've not heard, Julian Nagelsmann got sacked from Bayern Munich after only losing three games all year. He's lost three games all year, scored 112 goals in 37 games, and yet the gentleman has been sacked and replaced by Thomas Tuchel. If you haven't heard the story, go back in my video last week. I broke the whole story down in the ramifications. Chelsea have now officially placed him onto their shortlist of individuals that could potentially replace Graham Potter if the opportunity arose. This is being reported by Sky. The source, look, a lot of people always criticize Sky for their sources, but what one thing we know is Sky are always in the loop. They've always got access to players, they've always got access to clubs, and they've always got credible information. Sometimes they like to manipulate the information to make it more theatrical, sometimes they like to exaggerate it, but this is something we can believe. Vivil worked with Nagelsmann in the past, and Vivil would want to work with him in the future because they've had a successful tenure together. So it doesn't blow my mind that Chelsea could potentially go in for Nagels. It makes sense. And the fact that he's on the shortlist, it makes sense. Furthermore, and this is the interesting part, it has been now revealed that Chelsea paid £21 million to get Graham Potter out of Brighton. Getting Graham Potter out of Brighton cost £21 million and apparently to sack Graham Potter and all of his staff, it will cost close to £52 million. Hence, Chelsea don't want to do it at this moment in time. They will only do it if they deem it as a necessity, if they deem it as integral to what they believe is the right move to do. They are going to avoid it at all costs. Look guys, financial fair play is a real thing. I know Chelsea have been playing Monopoly ball. I know Chelsea have been throwing the money like left, right and centre. They've got the song Arab money in their background, throwing money around like it's a strip club. But... The reality is, the fact of the matter is, you're going to have to balance you. And the reason I think Potter's still in a job is because Chelsea don't want to be paying 52 million pounds to get him out. And number two, accept that mistake that they paid 21 million to just get him in. Like, it's not going to happen. But the latest financials have come out, and now that these financials are painting a picture that is a little bit scary. Look, whether you guys remember this or not, because it feels like a very long time ago, Bowley's only our owner because of the sanctions that were placed upon Roman Abramovich. Roman never wanted to sell Chelsea. Roman basically got cornered into a situation where he had to sell Chelsea. And during that period, we weren't selling clothes, we weren't selling tickets, we genuinely were living off our whatever we generated in guaranteed money. No more money was coming into their account and the latest financials came out for last year and Chelsea are in a loss. I don't know exactly how much I think it's like 119 million from the top of my memory from what I read this morning and this isn't good because a lot of you are gonna say Alex what does this actually mean let me just break it down for all of you what it means it means Chelsea could be in financial fair play trouble and very quick. Chelsea have got till the 30th of June 
to try to balance the books for this year as much as possible. Reason being is the window normally opens roughly around the 10th of July. It fluctuates. Sometimes the 5th, sometimes like it's in and around that region mid-June. Chelsea have got a whole host of players they need to sell so that they can get them accounted for this year. This calendar year of work. Not for next year because if it's after 1st of July then it's next year. If it's before, we can do it this year and balance the books a bit. The players that are mentioned, and some of them are very interested. So we already know that Ziyech, Pulisic are expected to leave. We know Aubameyang is expected to leave. We know Aspilicueta, if we can get him off the books, is expected to leave. Mason Mount, we know the story. 45 million pounds, 50 million pounds, we will be trying to get him off the book. Homegrown player as well, which could cause some issue for us in the long term, but at this moment in time, it will be pure profit onto the balance sheet. Ruben Loftus-Cheek is another vital asset to the club. However, they will try to get him off the books. But there are three players that, in my opinion, are on this list. Well, two are on the list and one that's asking to leave that we'll talk about later. Two are Mateo Kovacic. Kovacic has got a year left on his contract that at the end of the year and his representatives aren't playing ball. His individual representatives apparently are not negotiating with Chelsea the way Chelsea would want. The player is quite hesitant about re-signing at Chelsea and wants to understand what the future holds and wants to get more clarity before he commits to the club. This is something I understand. Chelsea has been very toxic-turvy. There's been a lot of players coming in, a lot of players coming out, and it's been causing a lot of commotion in my opinion. And it's not somewhere you want to sign a new deal. Like I don't blame Mateo Kovac for not wanting to stay. And the other one, a lot of you are going to be a more panicky about this than I am. Ben Chilwell. Ben Chilwell has got two years left on his deal in the summer. And Ben Chilwell is going to be potentially leaving Chelsea to move on to either Manchester City or whoever else is going to pay the fee. Chelsea are asking for somewhere between 50 to 55, 60 million pounds. And this is a fee in the ballpark where Chelsea will consider letting him go. I think this is a summer of you either re-sign or you get sold with two years left on you. I don't think Chelsea are gonna want to have another story like Mason Mounts where he's going into the last year of his contract, everything's going to be about him, everything's a little commotion, everything is always, oh, is Mason gonna stay? Oh, is Ben going to stay? Oh, is Mateo going to stay? No, I don't think Chelsea want to do that. And this is something that will drag on but I think Chelsea are going to be selling players and they're going to be selling players quick. Whether we're going to be able to generate the fees we want, I don't know. One story that came out of the blue from Sky Sports again today actually is that Kai Havertz potentially wants to leave the club. Kai Havertz does not want to be at Chelsea in the long run and this is coming from Sky Sports and Bayern Munich are not interested in him. And this really is, this is why I say be very picky with what you get take from Sky Sports because earlier I said they've got contact. There is an element of truth here. I believe this story. I believe that Kai Havertz is most probably using this car to get a new contract. Kai Havertz has got two years left in the summer. What did I tell you earlier in this video? Players are gonna have to re-sign or move on. And in this case, Kai Havertz is most probably negotiating a new contract. He most probably wants to go because he wants to be in the Champions League somewhere. But at the same time, he's the main man here at this moment in time. He takes penalties, he's getting to inflate his stats, and more importantly, he's getting regular minutes. For the first time in his career, since Bayer Leverkusen, he's getting consistent minutes and he's one of the first names on the team sheet. Why would he want to move on? Real Madrid aren't going to be interested in him at this moment in time. Yes, there were links, I don't buy it. Barcelona don't have the financial capabilities. Juventus aren't Juventus. Italy hasn't got the money to acquire him and pay him what he deserves. I don't see PSG coming in for him. And the only club in Germany that I believe he's good enough for to be at the top level, Bayern Munich, I don't see them coming in for him at this moment in time. Kai's gonna be almost shoehorned into staying at Chelsea, whether he signs a new deal or not. And it's not a great place for Chelsea to be as a club in the sense that you kind of have to keep him because you got him on a contract. But this is a good player and we need to try to re-sign him. If we get to get Joao Felix on a permanent with Nkunku and Kai, I genuinely believe this is going to be a good way for us to build a good spine of the team from the attack down, like get the Christmas tree going nicely with the three at the back. Something that is promising and exciting. Look guys, I'm not saying Kai Havertz is going to be leaving, but I'm not saying he's not going to be. It's something that we'll need to keep our eye on. I hope he doesn't leave, one of my favorite players in the team, but 
I wouldn't be honest and genuine with you if I just didn't talk about this. This is something that was mentioned. You make up your own minds about. Finally, the last story, and I can go on and edit this video and post it out for you guys. Noni Madueke and Levi Colwell performed fantastically in a 4 0 victory over France on the 21. I didn't watch the game, I watched the extended highlights. So, I, I'm going to talk more about the two individuals rather than the performance in the game. From what I saw, Colwell was very assured. He made one mistake that went viral on Twitter because you know, now that Colwell is getting a lot of props, people are taking it to the other side and just looking for the minor mistake and they're just gonna blow it up and inflate it. He looks very composed. Madaweke came on, got a goal and two assists and then the conversation starts. Is Madaweke not being utilized? Is Madaweke meant to start at Chelsea on a weekly basis? Why is Pulisic getting minutes? Why is Ziyech getting minutes above? I think they're, they're all valid points. I really do. I think I think Madueke came in for a fee, same as Mudrik, and Potter's doing this whole protect thing where he's not exposing them to too many minutes. I personally believe that's the wrong thing to do. I genuinely believe if you give Madueke and Mudrik minutes, I think people are going to be more accepting of their inconsistency than they would be of a Pulisic or a Ziyech. It's the shiny new toy syndrome. You get a new toy, you love the toy, even if it's got some defects, you're still going to love it and you're gonna to wanna to play with it. And more importantly, you're gonna be more patient with it. But the reality is, we know Ziyech and Pulisic are gonna be leaving the club. So why on earth are we giving two players minutes to develop and get better when we've got assets at home that need the nurture, the love and time? I think we need to be more selective with who we're giving minutes to and less harmony around the squad. That's personally, that's my opinion. Ben Jacobs has come out and spoke about Levi Colwell and he was very assertive in that Chelsea believe they've got a generational talent. They believe that he is phenomenal. They're trying to renegotiate a new seven to, six year, seven to eight year deal with him. And the only way they'll sell him is if the player's literally kicking up a fuss and saying, I want to go and I don't want to play for you. This is coming from Ben Jacobs. I think he's well informed when it comes to Chelsea. He's very reputable. He's got a lot of sources and he's right a lot of the time. So guys, this was the Kafka's view. I hope you lot enjoyed this. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts. Um, yeah, peace out, I'm out.